Biodynamic DT880 Pro and the DT880 Premium. We've got both of these. I'm gonna break it down and tell you what the differences are. Uh, and then I'm also gonna tell you what I think of this uh, set of headphones in both the different flavors. I'm gonna be keeping one and then uh, settling the other one. Just, but I got them both just so I can show you guys. Now, the Pro and the Premium are slightly different, mainly in the fit and the feel and the finish. The one thing that you're going to notice with both of them is they both have the amazing velour pads. It's, it's super soft. Uh, they're, you know, they completely go around your ear and they're, they're thick enough that your ear doesn't brush up against the, uh, you know, the area where the driver is or anything like that. Uh, I found these to be some of the best headphones on the market for extended use. Like we're talking like four and five hour listening sessions or even longer if you're, if, you know, if you're crazy and you just want to sit there all day and, and use these. Um, at, at some point in time, I, you know, while I'm using them, uh, you know, after three or four hours, I'll just be hanging out and I'll get up and be like, oh, I've got to take, take off my headphones. So it's almost like you forget that you're wearing them because they're, they're just there. Now the clamping factor on the pros is just a little bit tougher. They, uh, they clamp down with about 30% more force. And that's uh, one thing that after a little while, you know, I, I really didn't know that I was wearing them because they do put a tiny bit more squeeze on your head. These um, have less of a clamping force and therefore, in my opinion, are a lot more comfortable. Uh, they still have, you know, like I said, the same pads and uh, they're you know, super soft to put on your head. But um, the fact that there's a little bit less clamping force means you can't headbang with these guys. So if you're listening to your metal and you want to headbang, you just have to take them off and put it on speakers or maybe put these on. So um, that's probably the major difference for me, the clamping force. The other difference is on the top here where the band is, the pros um, you know, have like uh, all these buttons. You can actually unbutton that, look on the inside, see the metal band, uh, and also see the cord that's going through there. That may be good if you know, there's ever a short in the cord. You'll be able to fix it easily. Uh, but this one, you'll have to replace the band, but that's pretty easy to do as well uh, because these are, you know, they're constructed solidly, but, you know, you can also take them apart if you wanted to and repair them. There's, there's very easy ways to do all that. As far as the connection go on both of these, they both have an eighth inch mini gold plated stereo uh, connection and it comes with a quarter inch connection that screws on so it's not going to fall off. So you can use it either way you want. And I really like the way they did this. I don't like it when they make you choose between one or the other. They, they've given us both there. Um, the pros have a curly cable. I don't like curly cables because they add a lot of weight. So this is a personal taste thing. If you like curly cables, the pros have it. Uh, three, mi three millimeters, no, three meters in length. And the premium has a nice three meter long cable. I love this. This makes me so happy. So that's the differences. Now on the side here, we have a bit of plastic and uh, then both of these can be adjusted. And one thing that's interesting about the plastic is there's some braille on here to tell you which side is right and which side is left. So, uh, you know, if you're, if you can't, if you're blind, you're, you're good to go. If you're in a dark situation, you're good to go. But, you know, typically the left side is where the cord goes. So it should be easy to, you know, easy to tell just by picking them up and feeling which side has the cord on it. Um, other than that, we do have some metal fins here on the premium version and the fins, um, yeah, I'm frankly not even sure exactly what they do. They, they seem like they may provide a tiny bit of tension when you stretch them out, um, but really they look like they're just kind of there for looks and they look pretty cool. As far as adjusting these goes, they're both, you know, they both function the same way. Just adjust them there. And on the inside here we have not notches, so you can know exactly where the adjustment is, little circular notches. And they do twist a little bit, um, but they do not twist all the way around or anything like that. They're also pretty sturdy. Uh, the weakest link in the entire thing is the bit of plastic right here, uh, but there's a couple um, and a couple different screws in there. They're, they're hex, hex screws, but well, they should be pretty easy to take out uh, if you needed to, to change those out. Overall, they're a very well-built, sturdy uh, set of headphones. And um, the last thing to notice as far as the differences go between the two, on the side here, the premiums have sort of a riveted little um, metal thing with the uh, DT880 on it. So it's, it's sort of a nicer presentation there. And then the uh, the pros only have a printed version right on the, the mesh. And I've also noticed that the ink on the printed version will tend to rub off after time. So that's on there. Now the mesh here, speaking of the mesh, these are both semi-open. So they're not completely open, um, but you do get the benefit of having like, you know, a, a studio reference uh, set of headphones, you know, like the, the closed feel of them. But you also get the benefits of having, uh, you know, an open pair of headphones. They're not quite as open as they are closed, but they still have a much louder, or much louder, much larger soundstage than just any closed 
a set of headphones. Not quite as large of a sound stage as a fully open set of headphones, but it's a nice happy medium. And also, the fact that they're open makes the sound nice and precise. Now both the Premium and the Pro, they come in several different flavors as far as the impedance goes. And I'll break that down in very simple terms, but this is not the video to give you guys, you know, a lesson on impedance. They come in 32 ohms, 250 ohms, and 600 ohms. And I've got the 250 and the 600 right here. And here's the real difference. Um, a 32 ohm set of headphones, um, if you've got a noisy source, you're going to hear the noise a lot more. Uh, also, they're not quite as tight as the 600 ohm headphones, but uh, they can be driven with something like an iPod. You know, it do they don't require nearly as much power to drive them, and hence that's why if you have a noisy device, they're gonna, you're going to hear the noise a lot more. Um, now, when you move up to 250 ohm, they're good for like hi-fi systems and home listening, and then the 600 ohm is really good for studio applications and professional use. I use the 600 ohm version uh, because if you have any device um, that has any audible noise, it really brings that down a lot. And also, I like the fact that the bass is slightly tighter with the 600 ohm version, and, and I confirmed this with blind testing between the 250 ohm version, and I've never used the 32 ohm version. As far as the 250 ohm version, if you wanted to get kind of a happy medium, uh, they are they do sound very good. In fact, almost no difference in that in the 600 ohm version if you have a nice transparent source. Um, they, um, they can be powered with an iPod or a phone. Well, some phones have a pretty decent DAC in them, um, but the iPod was not quite loud enough to listen in a room with other activity going on. I needed a quiet room, and even then, if you really want to turn it up uh, and rock out or whatever, it's not going to give you enough power. So you're going to need an amp for the 250 ohm version and uh, definitely have to have an amp for the 600 ohm version. So those are the three different versions, and um, if you guys want more information on that, let me know, and maybe we'll do a special video just on that. All right, let's talk about how these sound. Um, now, there's a lot of people on different forums on the web that use tons of ridiculous terms. I'm going to try not to do that and just refer you over to some, uh, some frequency response graphs because, I mean, let's face it, headphones do typically color the sound, and if, and if they really wanted to make a completely flat set of headphones, I imagine they could do that, but they have always, they're, they're giving you a listening experience here. And this one they advertise as being very analytical, and I find that to be a very good way to describe these headphones. The highs are very clear, and there are a lot of highs. Not sibilant, though. I listened to you know a few different tracks, and I wasn't getting any sibilance. Um, even with Gar listening to Garrison Keillor with all of his Prairie Home companions, I, I, I you know you could hear all the all the. That's probably going to be killing your eardrums, but it it wasn't um, sibilant, so that's pretty cool. Um, the bass is uh, not as strong or as floppy as some uh, headphones out there. It's very tight. Very, the bass is very tight, and there actually is a decent amount of bass, but because it's very tight and not too boomy, um, it's not going to be good for dubstep or, or um, you know, I don't think a lot of people are, are going to be running around listening to hip-hop or rap or whatever with, with this set of headphones. You're probably going to want the DT770s or the 990s. Uh, having said all that, I think the 880s do have uh, the most perfect sound out of uh, you know any set of headphones in the 200 to, the 200 to 300 dollar price range they're not quite as fun as some but they're extremely clean cleaner than just about anything and when you put these on you're going to notice you know nuances that you didn't hear um, with other sets of cans even if the sound is like more fun or more of a hi-fi sound uh, these are definitely analytical uh, they're really good for studio use but I you know use them at home very good for video games uh, positional audio is also great because of the semi-open. Um, the soundstage is not quite as big as some because they're semi-open, but it's big enough that I'm able to easily pinpoint uh, things in video games. Just using, you know, the, the, you know, don't need any surround sound simulated nonsense. It all happens with the two speakers because you got two ears. So um, uh, one other thing I want to note, if you guys go for the premium edition, you get a nice carrying case, fancy carrying case that zips up. And there's some stuff in there, but there's a nice, you know, it's nice foam. And if you're taking this with you, I mean, this could be something uh, to, to consider. I really prefer the premiums over the pros, but um, if you need to save a little bit of money, you can get the pros and be just fine. Um, don't let the clamping factor scare you. There's, the pros are still more comfortable than 90% of the headphones on the market. Um, and they really are just one of the most comfortable sets of headphones that you're going to find anywhere. So in closing, I'll be, uh, I'm going to be selling these because I really don't think it's, I mean, I really don't need to keep both of them. These would be good for traveling or whatever, but I'm going to sell these and I'm going to keep the premiums because they're extremely comfortable. I love the way they sound. And uh, these are what I'm using 80% of the time at home. The other 20% of the time, you'll have to watch some other videos to figure out 
um, you know, all my others that I use. But these are my primary headphones right now. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and head over to the forum. If you have any insights or you know, creative, you know, creative constructive criticism, you can just click on the link in the bottom of the screen. See you guys next time.